I mean, obviously those teams can look differently depending on where they work. So you've touched really nicely on the different demographics in terms of, you know, you've got teenagers, you know, working on the shop floor, but you've also got more senior Australians as part of the workforce too. But Laurie Turner's written in an interesting question just on that diversity. She says, first of all, hello, old friend. Um, <laughs> Hi, Laurie, how are you? <laughs> referring to you, not me there, I assume. Um, she says, um, this differentiation between customer-facing colleagues versus office-based teams around safety and well-being, was that a challenge in terms of conflicting messages? And it, it just struck me when you mentioned you're sitting there at Coles HQ basically by yourself, but obviously, you know, down at Manly this morning, the, the Coles store was packed. So, yeah, interested in were there different channels for different audiences, Alice, there? Um, and thank you, Laurie, for that great question. Hi, Laurie. I think you're probably picking up, Luke, that the internal comms world is quite a small one. So <laughs> we do all sort of know each other. Um, yeah, it's a really good question. Look, I think, I think it's something that probably has been addressed at Coles over the last dec decade or so, and, and probably at the other big retailers too. But So this building is, is not called head office. It's called the store support centre. And the whole kind of purpose of me being here is to support stores and to support our team members out in stores and that's that's drummed into me the, the minute I kind of walk in the door and I think part of my job in internal comms is to help people in this building or pe people in store support centre roles to remember that they're uh, above all else their job is to um, is to support our stores and in turn our customers so we're not yes of course you know the safety and well-being of people in this building is critical but um, we position things sort of unashamedly as being for the benefit and for the purpose of, of our store. And by that, I, I include distribution and supply chain and um, drivers and all of the other people who make, make up our frontline teams. But, but we, we very much position things for that audience um, in the first instance. And even if, it's, even if it's something aimed perhaps more at a store support centre audience, um, very often we'll still position it from a, um, a, a store team member's point of view first, just as a, as a way of, I guess, reinforcing that culture. Um, but having said that, look, yeah, ab absolutely. We've got 14 to 15 year old um, teenagers all the way through to, I think our oldest team member is in her 80s, I'm pretty sure. Um, so, you know, that brings its own challenges. So for team members who are, older obviously COVID is a is a really um or particularly risky um thing and we provided um quite specific um uh, measures for that that, that demographic we've got 4,600 or 4,500 indigenous team members and again you know the government um the health department issued quite specific guidelines health guidelines for indigenous um members of the community and, and we were really keen to make sure that we um, we made those, you know, known and we were, we were adhering to those. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it, it's a really broad um, audience. But I think, if anything, this has probably served to, to kind of reinforce if we've got more in common than we, you know, have different. We all, we're all there um, trying to, to feed Australians and trying to, to get um, stock onto the shelves. And I think it's, it's sort of helped people realise that supermarkets uh, one of those, you know, we might not be um, kind of saving lives in a hospital, but we're one of those essential services that the country relies on. Um, you know, I think rightly, a lot of people have felt proud of what we've been able to do through this period. Well, that's an excellent point. Um, Sally Topford at that point has asked you to reflect, Alistair, not to put you on the spot. Uh, is there one particular thing you're most proud of during this time? Um, and I think you and I were reflecting the other day in our catch up it will be the sort of seminal moment you look back on in your career. I mean, amongst other moments too, but definitely a huge moment. So thank you for that, Sally and Alistair. I don't know if there's, where it's a small thing or a big thing that you sort of reflect on and think, yeah, we're, you know, as a Coles team, we're really proud of that. Yeah, I think um, responding to, a, look, the toilet paper stuff's so sort of emblematic now, but to a period in time where, where, Australians were worried, you know, they were buying toilet paper not, be, not because they um, were kind of being flippant. I think people were genuinely concerned and they were concerned about the future and they were concerned about um, their health and the health of the people they loved. And um, going into a supermarket 
and seeing an empty shelf um, kind of played into that anxiety. And, and, and I think one of the things I'm really proud of is how well Coles, and I think the whole um, sector, I mean, Coles work really closely with Woolworths and IGA and, and the other, um, and our suppliers through this period to, to alleviate those anxieties and fears. And, um, you know, that's, that's a pretty big deal. Um, but yeah, look, I'm proud. I'm proud of the way our team work together. We've got a small team here. We're not a, it's a, it's a big organization, but we run a pretty lean team and I'm, I'm really proud of the people I work with and, and how we work together. And, um, you know, it's, it's always a new challenge every day here. So, um, we don't kind of reflect back too often, but I am proud. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Well, mate, we've got a few more minutes left. So I thought maybe in just terms of a forward posturing in terms of the, you know, the post-COVID scenario and um, a few of the questions have a similar theme. So thank you, David Bezier, who asks, once the dust settles, is there one thing you think your team will really focus on to improve the function's effectiveness in, in the future? Um, and a similar question from an anonymous attendee saying, yeah, is there one new initiative you found during COVID that you will... I guess, incorporate into your organisation going forward. So I did see in the news earlier this week, it sounds like a lot of the restrictions on sort of bulk buying are slowly almost all being unwound now. So yeah, interested in your take, Alistair, forward posturing post-COVID, you know, what are the focuses, what are the key learnings and, and how are we going to move forward from here? So yeah, the restrictions have all lifted now. I think, I mean, as a business, look, I think the you know, we're in a different environment now. The country's in a very different place. And as a, as a business, no doubt, there'll be a lot more focus on, on value and, um, and how we can, um, you know, help feed Australians in a, in a, you know, perhaps a different economic environment than we were in a few months ago. For, from a comms point of view, um, look, I think at a, at a tactical level, some of those initiatives we've put in place to connect with team members personally, I, I think will continue. Um, we've, um, through this period, I think built a, perhaps a more personal relationship. And I, and I say we, as in Coles has built a more personal relationship with, um, team members than we might've had previously. And we've got, um, our annual or our, our biannual, um, engagement survey coming up this week. So it'll be interesting to see that, you know, what's changed and, and what, what's, what's moved. Um, I think, I think the whole kind of nature of discussions have, have, have probably changed. You know, we have, um, this, this, there is so much emphasis on safety in a way. I mean, there always was. Safety has always been an incredibly important focus, but it's just different, you know, the, the, the possibility of contracting a, a life-threatening virus um, in, in a day-to-day -day sense makes people's concerns different. So some of the communication practices and routines we have around safety, I think, is... I can't see them going away. I mean, um, as long as this is a, um, a a real threat in the community, we'll continue with those. Um, we've stepped up our, our use of Yammer and our enterprise social media and video. I mentioned, you know, I think those are now um, part of how we do things. Some things we're not doing now that we were doing previously that I can't see coming back. So, you know, here in the store support centre, every month we used to have a, a retail roundup with you know, 3,000 people physically gathered together in our, in our central atrium, that's not going to happen. Um, so we're using, um, you know, WebEx and tools like this to, to, to replace those. Similarly, we would annually have a kind of a big gathering of all of our store managers in, in the Melbourne Convention Centre or something like that each year. And again, I'd say it's pretty unlikely we're going to be able to do that or we would want to do that. So we're going to have to continue to find ways to um to replace those sort of um mediums and it's sort of interesting because lots of internal comms folks listening would would, would have had it drummed into them that face to face is your most you know important um channel and that's still true but it's it's harder to do that in an environment perhaps where you know you can't get more than 20 people in a room together and and, and even then i'm not sure you would so um i think we're we're, we're going to have to find new and inventive ways around those things too. Yeah, that's brilliant, mate. And it just sounds like a lot of the maybe traditional assumptions of 
communication face to face have perhaps been challenged and even subverted and look at the power of video um, and it sounds like Coles is really leading the charge on this front and even to think today we've had a really great turnout and we're hearing you live from the Coles support center I mean what an incredible way to communicate so uh, we're at 11:30, guys so I do just want to thank Alistair Marshall for his time what a brilliant um, presentation that was really insightful and thank you for being so generous with your insights and providing a lot of case studies for us um, to deal with. There was some great questions that came in that we didn't get around to answering. Some were about measurement, some were about different channels. So maybe we'll, um, we might, if we're cheeky, circulate those to Alistair and he might be able to um, write some dot points for us to share in our next blog post. Um, so thank you uh, attendees, wouldn't have been possible without you guys. We will be putting up a video of, from today that you can share with your colleagues. Um, and please write into us if you've got you know, feedback, we'd love to hear what you thought ideas for future webinars, etc. But um, Alistair, mate, thank you so much. Congratulations on all your success. Um, stay safe and keep up the good work. Thanks, Luke, and thanks everyone. And um, hopefully see you in person soon. Cheers. Cheers.